Good morning YouTube and welcome back to my channel today. You've just seen me preparing my breakfast this morning. It's currently about half eight in the morning and I have just had four eggs, three whole, four whites. I've had a black coffee as well and I'm about to go out this morning. I've got one hour's personal training session to do at Impulse and then I'm off down the gym for my leg day. Now today's video, I'm actually going to do a, well I'm going to show you my technique for the low bar squat. Now a lot of people do just a, a, a normal squat and think that's the only variation that you can do with the high bar, where it's literally resting right on the back of your neck, almost on top of your traps if you like. The low bar squat incorporates uh, more uh, movement from the bar at a lower angle. So the bar kind of sits sort of on your mid back, but there's some adaptations that you have to adhere to to get it right. So I'm gonna go through my normal squat for three sets, 50 kilos, 80 kilos, 100 kilos. I'm then gonna go through my low bar squat at 50 kilos, 80 kilos, and 100 kilos. So I'm not pushing a lot of weight in today's leg session, but what I do is, last leg session, I might have gone really heavy, hit my maxes, five sets of five. Today, I'm literally just going to stop the video, show a video, stop the video, show a video, and do some commentary on how to set up a low bar squat. A few moments later. Now, before I start, it's important to know the main differences that a low bar squat will have on your body. So, the low bar squat will actually help you to build explosive power in your glutes, more so than the high bar squat. For those of you that have squatted before, we all know that when you get into a squat position, you want the weight directly over your base of support. So that is through the heels. So therefore, with a high bar squat, when you go down, you, you're almost coming down in one plane of motion, i.e. straight down. And when you lift back up again, there's no real hinge from the hip joint. So with a low bar squat, your upper body will come forwards more to adapt to that new positioning of the bar being lower on the back. You still have to drive up through your heels, but your hips, your hips here will come forwards much, much more on a low bar squat. So you're lifting like this, whereas on a normal high bar squat, your body will be more upright, like this. With the high bar squat, dropping down straight, as said before, like this, will incorporate more quad dominant work. Hinging forwards in the low bar squat position and squatting up and down like so 
will incorporate more glute activation. Now obviously it all depends on the type of person that you are. For me, I've been low bar squatting now for a couple of months and I'm now pushing over and above what I would do on a high bar squat. So for me, using the low bar technique is actually working quite well and I'm actually pushing my numbers higher, I'm getting stronger. So how do you choose what squat is right for you? Just practice, practice a high bar squat, practice a low bar squat. Use this video now in my tutorial to actually give the low bar squat a go next time you do your leg day. So there's pros and cons to everything. I'm gonna add my first set in right now, which is 50 kilos, and it is a high bar squat, and notice how I am keeping the tension on my legs. So I'm not actually going out of my squat and pausing before I go back down again. I am literally keeping myself moving throughout the whole 12 rep set. So imagine that there's a spring on your head, okay? So what you're doing, you're coming up, you're compressing the spring as you come up, and then the spring is releasing and you're going straight back down again. This will help to keep tension on the muscles that you're using, i.e. high bar squat, quads. So this refers back to TUT, time under tension training. And you may have heard that in other videos or from friends. Basically that is what it is keeping the reps nice and controlled, keeping the tension on the muscle that you're using throughout the whole set. So you're not resting and you're not pausing. Okay, here's my second set of high bar squats, 80 kilos. Again, notice how, no, notice the position of the bar. It's right on my upper back, okay? My elbows are directly underneath the bar. I'm having a nice grip. My stance throughout the high bar and low bar squat will not change. So have a look at where the bar is posi positioned on my back in this next clip. So now in this third clip, again, high bar squat, 100 kilos for five reps. Now I'm not keeping the tension on my legs. I'm stopping at the top of the rep to get a breath in before I go back down again. And you might need to do that as the weight gets heavier. The time under tension stuff really is a lot easier at a lower weight. Although you're doing more reps, the heavier weights, or the heavier that you go, it's a lot, lot harder to sustain the time under tension technique. So again, take a look at the bar, have a look at my elbow position because it will change in, in the next clip on the low bar squat. Have a look at my stance, hasn't changed, and I'm still getting a good depth of at least 90 degrees. I like to go maybe just a little bit lower than 90. So have a look at this third clip, see what you think. So now you've seen my high bar squat footage, I'm gonna show you the comparison in low bar. So starting at 50 kilos, keeping the time under tension technique again because we're low for 12 reps.
Okay, without me saying anything, from that first clip, you must have noticed that the bar is now sitting, instead of sitting on my traps, it's sitting right down low, in almost in the mid of my back. My stance might be slightly wider, my knees slightly flared, as you never ever want to concave your knees when you're lifting in the squat. Keep them solid, keep your hips in line with your upper back and your shoulders. So here's my second set, 80 kilos, in the low bar squat again. Final set, set three, low bar squat, 100 kilos. Notice I'm wearing my belt for this now, just to give my core muscles some protection. I always wear a belt when I get to a certain weight. That weight is normally 100 kilos. You know, I'm not one of these guys that goes in the gym and wears my belt doing bicep curls. I don't wear my belt when I'm doing, you know, bent over rows. I hardly use my belt. Two exercises I use my belt for is deadlift and squat, but it is only at a certain weight. You don't want to get so comfortable that you have to use your belt for every single exercise, like a standing military press, for example, or a bicep curl, which I've seen before, which is completely ridiculous. So if you're one of those people, stop. Also, you'll notice my elbow and forearm placement. Now, in the high bar squat, you can just naturally put your hands on the bar, you're fine. In the low bar squat, because the bar is sitting much lower, your elbows, I don't know if you can see, but your elbows will tend to flare backwards like this, okay? And that's just the natural alignment of most people's spine. So what you'll need to do before you go into your first rep is tuck your elbows under. So you're here, you're setting yourself up for the low bar, take a nice deep breath in, tighten it up, bang, there, drop down. As you come out of the rep, you can either choose to relax here again, or you just keep it solid throughout the whole set. Now remember guys, you might be stronger doing a high bar squat at first, but I guarantee you, if you get used to doing a low bar squat, your strength will increase drastically. That is the reason why power lifters lift the way they do. They're all low bar squatters, because you can generate more power from the additional glute dominant exercise. So you're using your quad still, you know, you're using your hamstring still, you're using your core still. Unlike the high bar squat, your glutes are huge muscles, okay? Use them. Get in that low bar squat position, use your glutes, drive up. If you have to wear a belt, if you have to have to wrap your knees, do it. But don't do it at a point where you don't really need to use them. Hold off from using your belt, hold off from using your knee wraps. If you do feel a little bit of tension around your wrists, which you probably will do on the low bar squat because you are driving your, your arms in this position and the bar's much lower down your back and your wrists might suffer the consequence of that. But that just means do more grip strength exercises, work on your wrist support, work on getting that stronger. The squat is a massive exercise and if you can do all of your little auxiliary bits like for example, my hamstrings are not very strong, so I will spend sort of 20 minutes when I've just trained my biceps to work on my hamstrings. You know, I'll do my Romanian deadlifts, I'll do my normal deadlifts, I'll do my lying leg curls. I'll do those little auxiliary workouts and exercises to benefit bigger compound movements. So I, for example, I will do like a single arm rows to help with my pull up. You know, I'll train my abs to help with my pull-up because most people think that when they do a pull-up, oh, it's okay, you're just using your lats. No, 
you're using so many more muscles than your lats to do that pull up. You're using part of your shoulder, you're using part of your bicep, your grip, your wrist, and your core muscles. I've done pull ups before, weighted, and the next day my abs have killed. So just make sure that you're doing all those little auxiliary bits and bobs on top of your normal workouts to improve your bigger exercises. So there we have it guys. High bar squat, low bar squat, some gym footage as well for you. I hope you've learned a little bit from today's video. And if you have, and you've enjoyed what I've put out for you today, then please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you to all those people who liked and subscribed from my last video. Again, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm trying to sort of give you some different ideas and, and different ways that I can film and give you information. So anyone that does YouTube will know it takes time to get footage together, to edit the, the footage, to make sure that what you're saying is correct, to make sure that the information you're giving is positive and informative. So this is the next video I'm gonna upload. As I say, I hope you've all enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next one.